the National Children's Choir under the direction of Miss Judith St. Aubin.
made this hospital into a national medical center is our own Dr. Parrott, Dr. Robert Parrott. Mr. Mayor, Reverend Clergy, and all the rest of you, our friends. <clears throat> 108 years ago, the first few of us in this Children's Hospital family became revulsed at the dysentery and other infections and malnutrition that killed or wasted the bodies of so many Washington children. <clears throat> and we dreamed of a hospital to bring children back to health and to keep them well. We talked with other citizens of Washington. They responded, and Children's Hospital of the District of Columbia began. <clears throat> Improved health care for children, our first and primary objective. We should no longer be needed as we are today. And parts of this marvelous building can be rededicated as a museum to the history of child health accomplishments. And when that year comes, our Children's Hospital family will find a new child health challenge, and we'll dream a bit, and then we'll work with others, and we'll meet the challenge. Greetings to all of us, the Children's Hospital family, as we dedicate our new home. May God bless us all. The dedica dedication prayer of the new hospital will be given by the Right Reverend John Walker, dear friend and parent of children in Children's Hospital. John. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whose prophets of old did teach us that thy holy city, Jerusalem, would be filled with the sound of children playing in the streets thereof, and whose later prophets, one whom we call the Messiah, taught us that the kingdom of heaven was like unto a place that was filled with children. Bless this facility, this children's hospital, this National Medical Center for Children, which we dedicate in thy name and to the task of caring for children, healing them of illness, mending their broken bodies, and making them whole so that they may play and grow in strength from day to day. Bless all who staff this place, the doctors and nurses, and all those who serve the children here. Bless their parents and the homes from which they come, that all together we may provide for them a haven of blessing and peace and love, that they may grow in strength and courage to meet the tasks that they will face in the years ahead. Grant to those who serve them here, O God, the wisdom, the skill, and the patience 
that they may find ever new ways to make their lives whole and grant that their commitment may always be to love these little ones into health again, that someday in thy good time, places such as this will have lost their reason for being, and we can rejoice in the eternal health which thou dost desire for all of thy people. Amen. This uh, new hospital was built with the enthusiastic support of four Congresses, three Presidents, and both political parties. <laughs> One third of the capital funding came from private sources, two thirds from federal grants and loans. In short, the people of the United States, through their elected officials, built this facility, and it truly does belong to them. And to them, our hearts are full of love and gratitude. In honor of this special occasion, our governing board had a gold medallion struck of the hospital's logo. Engraved on the back of this medallion is the following inscription. For the people of the United States of America, with love and gratitude from the Family of Children's Hospital National Medical Center, March 6, 1977. Mr. President, you are the president of all the American people, and we hope you and Mrs. Carter, as devoted and loving parents, will accept this medal of love and gratitude for the people of our great country. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. I think it's very significant to point out that several presidents and several different Congresses, but many private contributors, have been involved in the evolution of this tremendous new health care center. I'm proud of it. It has been a subject of some criticism because of its cost. But I think we have to remember that this is the center of our government, and that what does occur here in 1977 and in the year 2000 can very well set a standard of care and love for children that will permeate the consciousness of doctors and nurses and parents, teachers and social workers throughout our country, and perhaps even throughout the world. I grew up in a home in a rural area of Georgia, but my mother was a registered nurse, and I and the other children in that country community had good health care, not just from her, but because there was a heavy emphasis on the prevention of disease, 
on inoculations and on a constant relationship with a large number of medical doctors who lived there then. We've let those standards of prevention emphasis deteriorate over the last few decades. Recently, Joe Califano, who's the new head of the Health and Education and Welfare Department, we're talking about this. And we decided to increase the emphasis placed on the health care for children. In the past, the federal government has paid 50% of the cost of identifying young children who need health care. And we had very slight response. So we decided in this next budget to increase that to 75%, hoping that in this way, within the school environment, within the outpatient clinics, within the county health centers, that we could identify children who perhaps have not had the good fortune that many of your children and my child have, has had and might have potential problems observed and corrected before they reach their formative years of life. This tremendous new children's hospital is designed to do several things. One is to treat those children who have severe health problems, particularly cardiac patients at a young age, below 18 or so. 90% of those kinds of patients in the whole metropolitan area are likely to be treated here. And one third of all the children in the metropolitan area of Washington will be treated here. A great deal of thought has gone into the design of this hospital to try to predict what the future might hold in energy conservation, health care, and in the use of brief periods of stay within a hospital environment for those who are quite ill. Another new or innovative change that has been made in the design is that there's a special place in every instance for the parent of a child to stay here with that child while the severe illness has not been corrected. So adjacent to each children's bed, there's a place for the parent to stay. This hospital, I believe, is associated with George Washington University and its medical center. And it's close enough so that federal officials as well can both teach, try new ideas, and learn. We, I think, can receive rich benefits from this center. And I believe that we can set a standard for the whole country. I know how much I love my own children. Just a few minutes ago, Amy and I were out in the front yard of the White House uh, designing a tree house that's going to be built for Amy. And it was one of those many instances that I have to be close to her. And I know that when she does get ill in the future, I want her to have good health care. But I'm just as interested as a child who lives in the oldest and most dilapidated apartment house in the District of Columbia. And I'm also interested in the children who live in Atlanta, Georgia, Detroit, or who live in other parts of our country. So I'm here to represent the government, which quite often makes mistakes, but which I hope always retains a heart attuned to loving care for those who are able to care for themselves Yes, but for primarily those whose care would be neglected if those who do occupy major political positions in the Congress and in the White House didn't care for everyone. This is a good day for us, and I hope that everyone who serves in this hospital or who comes here for treatment or whose family uses this facility will be blessed by it and will be inspired with a sense of compassion and understanding and brotherhood and love to keep illness away from our children and to correct those who are afflicted with disease. I want to congratulate those who have come before me who had the foresight to understand the need for this facility. And I think that every family who does live in that dilapidated apartment dwelling can breathe a little easier knowing 
that if their children are sick, that poverty or despair will not prevent their child from getting just as good medical treatment as the little daughter of the President of the United States. That's what's good about a system of government such as ours. We've got a long way to go in the field of health care, but this is a major step forward, and I'm very proud of what has been done and look forward with a great deal of determination to earn as president, working with all of you, the medal that has been struck and presented to me in Roseland. It will go in the White House Museum or in the archives, and I hope it will be a reminder in generations to come of the concern that many of you have had long before I was elected president at these tiny but precious uh, emblems of concern in the greatest country on earth, the children that we care so much about. Thank you again. I'm proud to be part of this great ceremony. The benediction will be given by the Reverend Charles Trentum, whom we all are familiar with. Dr. Trentum. Eternal Father, we bow to remember him who set a little child in the midst and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We think of all anxious parents who bring their hurting children to places such as this and rejoice in the prospect of their going away with vigorous health to face a full new life. We remember all who have made possible this house of healing. We thank thee for all the joys that healthy and happy children bring to us. Let all who work here be blessed with strong hearts and tender hands. In the healing name of him who said, unless you become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, even Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Ladies and gentlemen, there is a reception for you all in the cafeteria up on the second floor. We thank you all for coming, and especially are we grateful to the first family. Thank you.